When most people hear the term UFOs, they tend to think of aliens, extraterrestrial visitors from another world elsewhere in the universe. But what if this isn't the case? Indeed, it might be a much more frightening prospect that aliens are not the intelligence behind these mysterious aerial vehicles, and if that is the case, just what might they be? By definition, UFOs, unidentified flying objects, are very real. The real question is, if they are not aliens, then what are they? Could they be top secret military aircraft? Or perhaps human time travellers from the future? Or could they even be entities from another dimension? Or perhaps an unknown species that live right here on Earth, deep under the ground? If we assume then that aliens, at least as most of us understand them, are not behind the many UFO sightings reported each year around the world, what other explanation could there be for these bizarre events and encounters? We will begin with what many people will consider to be the most likely option, that UFOs are in fact top secret futuristic military vehicles. After all, it is certainly not that much of a stretch of the imagination to think that various militaries and governments around the world have such advanced and experimental aircraft. A generally agreed notion is that whatever the official government and military stance is in terms of advanced technology and what is available to them, they are likely three decades beyond that behind closed doors. And if we accept the idea to be accurate, then it is certainly not that crazy a notion that at least some governments and militaries around the world are experimenting with highly advanced vehicles, ones that can travel through air and in water, as well as quite possibly into space. And if this were true, then it certainly wouldn't do them any harm that the general public and other governments around the world would perceive these aircraft as vehicles from another planet. And while it is a question to be fully explored another time, we might ask, if one or more of the world's militaries are behind these UFO sightings, are these advanced vehicles the result of human ingenuity, or might they be based on the technology of recovered alien aircraft? And wherever the technology did come from, for what purpose are these advanced vehicles being built? Our next possibility is no less intriguing, and also involves the military in certain departments of the government. It is, however, a little more unsettling than mere experimental vehicles. We know, at least on some occasions, there appears to be a human presence involved with many UFO sightings and claims of alien abduction. And while there are many theories as to why this might be, including that elements of the world's governments are working alongside these potential alien visitors, one particularly intriguing if dark theory stands out. That many of these UFO sightings and subsequent alien abductions are the result of government experiments involving mind-altering substances and mind-control techniques. Perhaps one of the best examples of these possible government experiments is the famous Antonio Villas Boas abduction that unfolded in Brazil in 1957. Boas would claim that he was abducted by alien entities and forced on their ship. Following several experiments, he then claimed that a female alien encouraged him to have sex with her, which he duly did, even claiming that they had conceived a hybrid child. As truly bizarre as this account seems, even to people in the UFO community, Boas didn't once waver from his version of events. However, in more recent years, new intriguing information has surfaced regarding the case, mainly thanks to researcher and author Nick Redfern, who relayed the information in his book Top Secret Alien Abduction Files. In the book, Redfern would highlight the revelations of whistleblower Bosco Nerokovic, a CIA employee and asset who informed fellow researcher Rich Reynolds that several intelligence agencies had played a part in the orchestration of the abduction. The reason for this was nothing more than to test just how much the human mind could be manipulated, using a combination of props and mind-altering drugs. It was essentially an in-the-field experiment of the MKUltra program. It was claimed that the UFO that Boas witnessed was actually an unmarked black military helicopter. However, due to the spraying of chemicals over the field where the farmer was working, he perceived the helicopter to be a UFO. Once he was incapacitated, he was taken to a secret location with several rooms inside. Further mind-altering drugs were administered, which would make him believe he was on board a spacecraft. 
the female alien with whom he claimed he had conceived a child was in fact a local prostitute who was given orders from the agency on how to act and what to say. Further drugs were administered before he was returned to the spot he was taken. He then awoke to see the UFO or the helicopter rising above him. It is perhaps interesting to note that intelligence agencies would often use a combination of mind-altering drugs and the services of prostitutes with their targets for a variety of reasons, not least so they could use evidence of these liaisons for blackmail purposes or to ensure a person's silence. Might the Boas case have been a continuation of this, albeit for different reasons? And might any further UFO incidents have been the result of intelligence interference? Maybe there is a human involvement in these UFO sightings, not one from the present, but from the future. Could it be that the UFOs many people have reported over the decades are the result of human time travellers? As bizarre as that might sound to some, we can rest assured that if the ability to travel through time was discovered at some point in the future, it is almost certain that time travelling missions would go ahead. And while these would predominantly be for scientific purposes, at least initially, it is also very likely that time travel tourism would take place. Indeed, what to us is a complex and unsolved mystery could be to those hundreds or thousands of years into the future nothing more than a commercial sightseeing adventure. Perhaps this also might explain some of the potential sightings of strange aerial craft thousands of years ago that are found in ancient writings and paintings. We only need to look at the Sibirin space tourist industry that will very likely achieve hotels in orbit around the Earth in the near future and possibly sightseeing trips to the Moon and maybe much further over the coming decades to see that commercial time travel, in theory, would be more than appealing and profitable. There could, though, be a very specific reason for these speculative time travel missions. We might consider, for example, that environmental conditions and the climate will likely be much different in the future, and that time travelling missions to our own modern era might relate to this. Ultimately, could it be possible that time travellers from the future are coming back to specific points in the second half of the 20th century and early 21st century in an effort to save the environment in their own time? With this in mind, it is interesting to note that many people who claim to have had close encounters with these alien entities often recall them being very human looking and of issuing warnings to them regarding how we are treating the planet and how we need to change our ways if humans are going to survive. And these encounters are many and go back decades. Perhaps this might also explain why the modern UFO era began in the late 1940s when the consequences of human advancement showed these tentative signs, not least following the unleashing of nuclear weapons at the end of the Second World War. There is of course another possibility, that these mysterious vehicles are arriving from another dimension. We might note that many mainstream scientists have publicly contemplated the possible existence of other dimensions alongside our own. And furthermore, it has been theorised that these dimensions may, on occasion, overlap, which would, albeit temporarily, allow access to these strange vehicles from their realm of existence to our own. And we should stress, we are not speculating on just one or even two or three other alternatives, but multiple others. If that is the case, then that would mean multiple other beings and races that are potentially visiting the Earth. This might explain why there are multiple different descriptions of apparent alien entities, because they are, in fact, interdimensional beings, or unique to their own respective environments. Perhaps these alternative dimensions occasionally crash into each other, and so allowing us to temporarily witness these curious crafts. However, if these UFO sightings are merely temporary and unintentional viewings of aerial vehicles from another dimension, how would that explain the alien abduction phenomena? With this in mind, might these interdimensional visits be of a more purposely planned nature? Might entities from another realm of existence be entering our dimension as part of unknown missions towards an equally unknown agenda? And if these vehicles are arriving here purposely from another dimension, we might ask, why exactly are they doing so? What are the purposes of these visits, and should it be a concern to us? Why would entities from another realm of existence wish to seemingly study human beings, and what might the end game be? 
Without a doubt, one of the most intriguing theories as to what these UFOs might be is that they are ghost vehicles from the ancient past. Perhaps the aerial vehicles of an unknown advanced civilization from antiquity that once traversed the Earth's skies thousands of years ago. If we take this speculation a stage further, might they be the advanced aerial craft of the inhabitants of Atlantis, or perhaps of the gods themselves? The idea is not as outlandish as it first sounds. There have been many apparent sightings of ghost ships over the centuries, for example, as well as reports of trains being heard on rail tracks that are no longer used, and even cars that appear out of nowhere and then disappear again. In the early 2010s, there were several sightings of mysterious ghost planes that were reported in Derbyshire in the United Kingdom. Many people would claim to have seen these planes some previous decades, and what's more, like many UFO sightings, they would claim these out-of-place aircraft were completely silent as they moved through the sky. Might it be that at least some of the UFOs we are seeing are ghost vehicles from ancient times, perhaps the aerial craft of a lost, unknown, advanced ancient civilization? Might this explain why they appear one minute and then disappear the next, much like a ghost or even a ghost ship might? And if so, at what point in time did these vehicles roam the skies for real? Perhaps our last possibility is both the most intriguing and possibly the most concerning. Rather than being visitors from another world, dimension or time, might the intelligence behind these UFOs actually be coming from our own planet, from deep under the ground or perhaps under the ocean? And might these entities not be alien to us or Earth at all, but another indigenous species that has discreetly lived here alongside us for thousands of years? Might they be connected to various people from ancient legends, perhaps even the gods of antiquity, who withdrew from the public and lived unknown to humanity deep within the Earth? It is perhaps interesting to note that many UFO sightings happen over water, with these objects often disappearing deep beneath the waves. There are also many sightings near the world's mountains. If we further examine some of these ancient writings, many state the gods were extraterrestrial visitors who came from an aquatic world and who ruled over humanity for thousands of years. They then put selected tribes or families in charge as kings and withdrew from public view. It is also interesting to note that many encounters with these ancient gods often took place on mountain tops. If the occupants of these advanced aerial and subaquatic vehicles do indeed call Earth home, might they be the descendants of the gods of ancient times? Perhaps if we accept the remarkably long lives these gods are said to have had, might they even be the gods themselves? There are many other possibilities to be considered and explored as the study of UFOs continues over the years. Might it be, as some researchers have suggested in recent times, that these apparent objects are some kind of natural phenomena we just don't yet understand, perhaps involving plasma or electromagnetic energy? The fact is, by definition, UFOs are very real. As to what the intelligence, if any, is behind them, however, that remains unanswered and unknown.